I think the shopping center uh, environment has developed completely differently in different places, right? So if you look at the south of Europe, it's all French model, big hypermarkets. They drove expansion because they had the balance sheet to buy land and develop in those places in which it takes 15 years to develop. And, you know, because of those factors, let's say south of Europe, to be generalistic here, is hypermarket-driven shopping gallery next to it. All of the north is more urban, you know, has developed in, inside the city centers. And, uh, you know, you couldn't touch a city center in Italy, of course, you know, it would be imp impossible to develop anything, right? So today the landscape has, or the way this has developed, has developed into a different, uh, very different landscape in, in the different countries in which we can invest. Now, going forward, I think if you could do urban schemes, as Andy was describing, those are winners in every place in which uh, you, you would invest in those, right? I think that's the model yeah, of the we're future. Going forwards. Yes, going I think I think those schemes would always work everywhere you place them. Uh, so I would certainly be supportive of investing in those all over the place. Now, if you're going to be able to develop those in city centers in Italy in the future or in Spain or places like that, that re remains to be seen also, right? Because that hasn't changed. Regulation hasn't changed. I mean, it's interesting, one of the beauties of what we do as a profession, I, I only spent half my life doing retail now, I'm like John. Um, now, the beauty is that it reinvents itself, and 20 years ago, um, in France, the, the all-powerful model was a thumping great hypermarket, and down the end of the rather modest mall, you'd find a snack stall. And um, that obviously completely reinvents itself. The hypermarket is hiving off space, reusing it, recycling it for more inventive things. And the FNAC store, they've got issues. Um, can get through them um, with, by embracing online. But the beauty of the sector is that it, it keeps on changing. Yeah, and we do have to deal with the legacy of what, of what we've got. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, difficult to generalise, but I think we've. If there is any consensus around your what's what's the what's the, what would be the way to go? I, th I think we agree that um, urban environments are increasingly important. Mm -hmm. Definitely, public transportation. I can't remember the statistic. I don't know whether one of my team is in the room can remember, but um, where <laughs> that'll be you, Chris. Hiding, run away. Hiding, Chris hiding, hiding around the corner. Yes, yes, for a um, there was a fa fantastic <coughs> statistic when we were looking at Stockholm um, around the number of uh, 20 to 25 year olds who haven't bothered to take a driving test. They're not interested in cars and they're just using public transport. Yeah. I've got 28% of that age category who could drive, <coughs> it might be the wrong number, but it, 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 it was very significant. And I thought that was, obviously that's, that's in the Nordics, that's, that is in an area that's more, more, more urban, more used to function yeah. that way, but I thought that was really quite amazing. Yeah, and train stations are now throwing out great shopping centres rather than functional nasty ones. Uh, in Berlin the other day, walked through the Hauptbahnhof and on three separate levels with sight lines up and down. <coughs> Fantastic. So that really is a, <clears throat> those kind of transport hubs are becoming much more, yeah. uh, because there is an yeah. opportunity to um, develop a shopping centre there where maybe right. there's not anywhere else in the, in the middle of the city. They're hard to replicate, which was mm -hmm. like, you know, the urban or transport hubs you can't replicate them, can't just throw out another one. But the reason is that in, for my, in my generation, a car used to represent freedom. But for my daughters, it represents a burden, a prison, because it's financially, it's, and, and if they want to have a car, they share a car, especially in the uh, urban environment, you go to your neighbor or you Google a bit and you share um, all kind of cars very easily. It's demand driven. I think this is the trend. And there is a statement, um, cars created shopping centers and smartphones will kill them. <laughs> and, and I think that's, that's basically true. That's the basic driver.